Let's talk about optional chaining in JavaScript in five minutes. What's up everyone? My name is James Q Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics every week. Is that redundant? I guess so. But I do a lot with JavaScript and I want to cover some of the JavaScript fundamentals and tips and tricks and things that you may not even be aware of. One of those is optional chaining in JavaScript, which is a neat little feature that can help save you some time and effort when you write your code. Now, what optional chaining does is keep you from having to do checks on each of your nested property names as you try to access them. We'll see what that looks like in a second. Now, if you're interested in learning more about JavaScript, I'm actually working on a JavaScript challenges course. And if you're interested in that, you can sign up for my newsletter at jamesqquick.com slash newsletter, and you'll get all the updates as I make progress. So let's go ahead and dive into VS Code and we'll take a look at an example here. All right, so I'm inside of VS Code and I'm a Harry Potter fan. If you watch any of my videos, you probably know that. So I've got a student object here uh, that represents Harry Potter. So the name is Harry Potter, house is Gryffindor, year is six. And then the address for Harry Potter is uh, has three different properties. So address is a nested object with three properties, street number, street name, confirmed, all right? And then we uh, take that student, we put it into an array for it to be an array of students. I was just too lazy to write out other students, so we just have one. But inside of the send welcome letters, if confirmed, we have uh, where well, we're gonna iterate through each student, and for each one, we're gonna send out their letter. But we only wanna do that if their address is confirmed because we wanna make sure that we don't send welcome letters to students who aren't meant to be or aren't going to become witches and wizards. So this all works really nice. This log message you can see in here is working well. And I'm using the Quokka extension. So this is uh, basically a live scratch pad for JavaScript that allows us to see the output for this console log right in line here and then at the bottom, which is pretty neat. So you can see it's working at sending welcome letter to Harry Potter at four private jive. But what if this student object didn't have uh, an address object? What if it didn't have an address property? Well, we're gonna have errors here because it's saying cannot access street name and number, or just number in this case, from undefined, because address is undefined. So what do we do here? Well, we could do some checks. We could say, if there, if there is no student dot address, then we could just uh, return, okay? So if there is no address, then we just return. But we then want to check the confirmed property. So this is returning early. It's short circuiting where it's not running this console log, but we also want to check whether or not this address is confirmed. So then we could add on another, if it's not, if there is no address, or if there is no student.address.confirmed. So if confirmed is false, then we also return. So we're starting to check, like to be able to check this confirmed property, we then have to check the address and we have to do that for the street number and the street name. But what if we could shorten this a little bit so we don't have to do all these checks? Well, that's what the optional uh, chaining is used for. So what we can do is we can say if there is no student dot address, so we know we'll have a student, we don't know we're going to have an address property. And because we don't know that we can add this question mark, and then we can add on our confirmed. So what this allows us to do is we know we have a student because we're iterating through each student, but each student doesn't necessarily have an address. We don't know that for a fact. So we're going to put in this question mark that basically says, I don't know if this thing exists. If it does, then go ahead and run on to the next thing, check for conform, confirmed. If not, just go ahead and short circuit. I don't need this anymore. If there is no address, then I don't, then I can't get confirmed because the address doesn't exist. So now I can do a return here. So we're already saving a little bit of code here by using our optional chaining. Now, one thing to remember is that, let's log out student.address with the question mark dot confirm. If we log this out, this should, log out for us undefined. And that's become that's because the optional chaining operator, if this address does not exist, will return to us undefined. So this will actually print out to us undefined here. So with this optional chaining, we don't have to directly or separately check if the address object or property exists. We can do that all in line and then just go based on the confirmed Boolean here. So if we put back in our address, you should see that now this returns or this demos as true up here, which then lets us log on to do or continue on to do our console.log. All right, let's take a look at a couple of other use cases that I found in this article at javascript.info. I'll put a link down there. There's kind of a cool, a couple of cool examples in here. 
you can uh, do optional chaining with a method. So if there is an admin method on this user admin object, go ahead and call it. That's kind of neat. If there is not a user, or if there is not an admin function on user guest in this case, it will do nothing because there's no such method. That's really cool. Neat little shorthand there. And we also can do that with uh, object key value pairs, where if we have an object, if that object does exist, we can go ahead and get that key. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, then well, we'll get back undefined because it doesn't exist. So that's a couple of different use cases for optional chaining in JavaScript, which are pretty neat. If you're interested in learning more about different topics in JavaScript, let me know what kind of topics you'd like to see me cover in five minutes, and I'll try to get a video out for you. In the meantime, if you're also interested in my JavaScript challenges course, you can sign up for the newsletter at jamesqquick.com slash newsletter to get any updates as I have them. Thanks as always for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.